For one final time here on the West Coast, it's time for some special edition as the Dallas Cowboys shift their focus of training camp 2023 back to the Lone Star State. Preseason games already in the books as well as we continue forward toward week one against the New York Giants. Alongside Nick Eatman, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us as they're already wrapping things up in training camp 2023 behind us. The Cowboys have now finished on the practice fields. What's been your overall thought of how camp has gone this season? Well, I think anytime you're looking at practice and when you're looking at, you know, offense, defense, you want both of them to, to, to do well. And so and I think that's the good thing is, is he had some balance. You had days where the, the defense really showed their dominance. Micah Parsons uh, leading that charge. You, you had days when the offense would, would get there, especially in the red zone. Dak Prescott throwing to those receivers so I think Nate the balance of the offense and the defense back and forth back and forth that leads to good competition it also leads to a well-balanced team I'm, I'm with you 100% I like the, the tempo uh, we haven't had that tempo in the last few years of as soon as they put on pads they had a, a, a urgency about them to just get things going and especially before the last preseason game they had two great practices and you know Michael Parsons, love you, man, but quit wrecking, wrecking practice. <laughs> <laughs> there were times when the offense really couldn't even get a snap off because Micah Parsons was in the backfield so often. And it looked like when the pads came on, the defense had the advantage. And that's exactly what Nick was alluding to. But as soon as this guy came back, the offense seemingly found a rhythm. And that man is none other than Zach Martin. He made his return to practice early in the week. He, he officially arrived in Oxnard on Monday, Tuesday, his first action. He worked into practices both Tuesday and Wednesday, but it was good to see Zach Martin back out on the field. Definitely good to see him. And also, he wasn't even in some of the team drills, but you could see the competition was raised big time. And, and I think just the, from the intensity, uh, I mean, you know, he he understands that, you know, hey, he, he's he's kind of working his way up to, to the start of the season. But the guys behind him, the reps just got a little fewer now. And so it, it, it just seemed for one reason or another, the intensity was there. And it really spirited the last few days of practice. And what I noticed most is how he, when he's in practice, how guys will break off from the coaches and go talk to him about different situations. I saw Josh Ball, DJ Bass, and a host of guys just say, hey, how would you place your hands here? How would you take this step there? And he's just taking the time to show them, you know. Now, he he's a, hasn't participated in the team, a lot of the team drills, but all the individual drills, man, he's a perfect technician. He works well. I think Tyron Smith is glad to see him back because he was getting all of that, you know, sharing all the information. Now, Zach, their team leader is back, and I'm glad to have him here. Yeah, it's not just an addition on the field, which it certainly is. He's still one of the best guards, if not the best guard in football as we speak, but he's just one of those leaders. He's a classroom guy, somebody that's going to continue to push these guys forward, and that's something that you can't necessarily calculate on the field. You can calculate it in the contract. He's earning about an $8 million raise, good for Zach Martin, but it's just the addition to what he brings to this football team. Any sport, any the, the best players, the best leaders are the ones that make the guys around them better. And, and not only did the right guard spot get better, but the center got better. Tyler Biotish got better. And, and maybe a little feisty here too. And the right tackle, Terrence Steele, he got better as well. That right is what having a guy like Zach Martin does. And then if they're, they're better, then the whole line's better, the quarterback's better, running back better, all that kind of stuff. You know what? He's not the prodigal son because he didn't go out and do nothing, anything wrong. Sure. But they say the way Terrence still hugged this dude, you'd have thought he was a long lost product, you know, prodigal son because he hugged him forever. I love when a guy can do that to a room mentally physically and spiritually man he, he's it he is the glue now my quarterback can step up and we can you let these tackles run things around the edge and that is what you need a great offensive lineman in the middle so we've heard about zach martin all week long let's hear from the man himself and what he had to say about the return you know this was obviously you know weighing heavy on me and you know, I had to do what I had to do to get it done, and and now it's 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 all about the season. It's all about getting ready for the season and helping this team team win a championship. So that that's where my mind goes right away. Um, you know, I got a little you know got some business school here over these last few weeks, but uh, but now I, I'm focused on on football. Of course, Zach Martin there, brought to you by Texas Lotto. Nick, does this solve? some of the depth questions that the Cowboys have on the offensive line, or is this mostly just uh, getting the guy back you knew would come back? I don't think it solves the problem of, of, of the depth because you still got to figure out the guys behind him. Who, who are the backup guys? Who's the backup swing tackle? Who's the backup guard, center, all that stuff. But it, it's nice to know that you don't have one of them starting because, because the, you know, obviously nobody can really replace 
Zach Martin unless it's either L.A. or maybe this guy. <laughs> you know, so that you know, but but they're the, the, one of the best of all time in the whole league. And so you know, yes, the, the trickle down effect, but you still got some issues there in the depth. Well, Osco, uh, Awesome Richards. T.J. Bass, we need to see these guys in there. Uh, we know that Matt Forniak is a center now. These other three guys I mentioned, that we talking about the swing tackle and awesome. We talking about Walesco well, fighting for the swing tackle. We talking about T.J. Bass growing tremendously in these next few games to be what we needed to be at the swing guard. One of the questions around Cowboys roster building this offseason was, do they have depth on the offensive line? And can some of the youth on up front really step up and fill the role? Same question could have been asked about the linebackers, and we've seen some of those linebackers step up here in Oxnard. When we come back, have Damone Clark and DeMarvian Overshone really built into a role on that defensive second level so that way Dan Quinn is comfortable going into week one this year. Special edition presented by AT&T is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com. Make your crypto play today. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Back here with more special edition with Nick Eatman and Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans here from Oxnard, California, where on the practice fields behind us, we've seen some youth emerge, especially at the second level of Dan Quinn's defense. The linebacker position, it seemingly has some reinforcements. Leighton Van Der Esch, of course, has been fantastic, but really it's been Damone Clark that's set the tone playing sideline to sideline heading into year number two. Is there really any expectation for Damone Clark or is anything he brings to the table a good thing for this Cowboys defense? Well, I, I think it starts from last year. I mean, last year, he no one really thought, other than the Cowboys who drafted him, that thought he was going to be able to do anything and contribute. And the fact that he was able to do that, play the second half of the season, you know, what, what a boost it was for him and also for, for the, the entire defense to get him now ready to go just like the rest in year two. He's not a rookie. He is a year two guy. And it, it showed in that. And in the first game he played, just the way he, he ran around and the, and the practices and everything, I just really love what I'm seeing from him. I like what the training staff did when they took their time. They got him right, but boy, oh, from last year, this don't look like the same guy. I didn't pay attention the first few weeks, but this last preseason game, he was everywhere. Damone Clark, hats off to you. Damone Clark saying that Leighton Van Der Esch has really poured into him the same way that Sean Lee poured into Leighton Van Der Esch, and Damone Clark look, looks to return the favor a little bit, even as a second-year guy with the rookie DeMarvian Overshone and starting to pour into him as well at the second level. What are the expectations for the rookie in Overshone, the way that he's shown out here in camp as well? Yeah, I just think Dan Quinn, just that's just a, another toy he could play with in the toolbox there. I mean, just a guy that that is going to be a special teams guy. He is also he, – he's – kind of like a safety, kind of like a jack linebacker. He's just going to be everywhere. And But he saw that, that, that physicality, you know, the first time he was really tested in, in, during the preseason. And he made a great play there at the line of scrimmage. He just, he's a big time hitter. He's going to be your dime and your nickel uh, Mike linebacker. This guy is sweet. He can run, he can hit. And even when he missed the tackle, you know what? He's in the proper hole. This guy's ahead of the game. What about Jabril Cox? Because we've talked about him the last couple of years. He was really the first linebacker that was expected to step up and fill a similar role that Damone Clark and DeMarvian Overshone are filling at this point on the defense. But is there pressure, Nate, on Jabril Cox to get the job done going into year three? After this first preseason game, it's, it's there. I mean, he started training camp and he, he was hell on wheels. Even in OTAs, this kid has been trying to prove himself. But these other two guys are just on a different level right now. Yeah, I mean, anytime, you know, they drafted uh, Damone Clark in the fifth round, but with an idea that he could be a first, second round type talent. Same with Overshone. So now, any, any player in their third year that's seen two, two guys at their position drafted and playing more, yeah, the pressure will be on. What, what do you expect about the top guy, Leighton Van Der Esch, still flying around, showing a little bit of pass rush yeah, ability rushing, as well off the edge? Rushing from the edge, yeah. I mean, you know, you talked about linebackers. You didn't even mention number 11. Are we, are, we're counting him a We're going to count rusher. him a pass rusher, Michael Parsons. We'll but, but, you, but you know what? When Leighton Van Der Esch can rush from the edge, yeah. maybe Parsons moves back. That's what you want the quarterback. You don't, you don't want the quarterback to even know 
what these guys are doing. Yeah, they're there, but you don't know if they're coming forward, backward, side to side. That, that's, a, that's a good thing. Layton has uh, bounced back from the injuries. He's, he's a sturdy player. He knows the defense, and he knows every, everybody's position, so he, he's a much-needed asset. He has been a really a, a, a huge plus for that defense, and he's somebody that these young guys can learn to, so having Leighton Vander Esch at the top really sets the tone for the guys beneath him, and I'm excited to see how Dan Quinn and Leighton Vander Esch help those guys develop along the way. Speaking of developing, Jalen Tolbert has had a phenomenal camp so far here in Oxnard, California. When we come back, Haley Sutton goes one-on-one -on -one with the second-year wide receiver and his expectations going into year number two. This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. This segment is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back in to Special Edition. We're on the practice fields behind us in Oxnard. The Cowboys have wrapped up training camp 2023, at least on the West Coast. And one of the big standouts on the practice field this year was second-year wide receiver Jalen Tolbert, who Haley Sutton had a chance to catch up with. Oh! So you just saw the spectacular play that everybody has been talking about this week, and we've got the man behind that catch, none other than Jalen Tolbert. Jalen, uh, we're going to start right there. That athletic catch you had looking a little bit like Michael Jackson out there mm -hmm. on your toes. Uh, just walk us through that route and how excited you were to go back and see the video. Uh, yeah, so I have a four basic back line route, and so you know I sold a fade and then wrapped around, and Will just gave me a chance on the ball. It was a high ball where either I catch it or it's out of bounds, and you know I just jumped and tried to use my body control and, and land and bounce. And you did, yep. you did, and it was sensational. But really, it, it, for us who have been here at camp, we've seen the work that you've put in. Uh, you've had a tremendous camp so far. Uh, what's your preparation been like in the off season, coming into this season, you know, preparing to be potentially one of the starting wide, wide receivers? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously after last season, I went and rebuilt my confidence, my mental, you know, read a book that, that Dak had bought for me uh, and highlighted some key points in it. and then. From there, really just built, started building the chemistry with Dak and, you know, working on the stuff that we were going to run in the offense. And then, obviously, Brandon Cooks came in and, you know, it played a big part in a veteran leadership for me that I've never that I've never had. And so having him to be able to go to Oregon with and work and just see how how and why he's so successful at this, at this level uh, was special. And so just working with him and getting little tips from everybody and just moving around and staying on the move, working and grinding, uh, it's starting to pay off. You've got mentors like Dak and Brandon Cooks, but also a lot of that is the work that you've put in. It it paid off as well in Saturday's game last week. You got your first career touchdown. Uh, how good did it feel just to get that one out of the way? Uh, yeah, it was special uh, to be able to, you know, obviously I knew once they called that certain play that, that I had the biggest opportunity to score on that play. And, uh, you know, just wanted to be patient, not get too hot and get too low, you know, ran a good route and scored. And so having that person under my belt is, is, is special and you know, looking forward to, to growing on it. You guys have another preseason game coming up on Saturday, but even beyond that, with the season just about three weeks away now, what are some goals that you have for yourself, and what does a successful 2023 look like for Jalen Tolbert? Uh, honestly, just be better than I was yesterday and continue to grow and do my 111 for the team. Whatever they ask me to do, just do that. Uh, special teams, offense, you know, however I can contribute, just contribute and, you know, do it to the best of my ability. All right, there you have it. Jalen Tolbert, we'll catch you on Saturday. Thank you. Yep, appreciate it. Thank you very much, Haley, and of course, Jalen Tolbert. He's powered through some of the expectations in that interview brought to you by Reliant. When we come back, we go from a young wide out to a veteran wide receiver. Michael Gallup biked up in training camp practice. What does he have to say about training camp 2023? This segment was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Back here in Oxnard, California with more special edition. Before we hear from Michael Gallup mic'd up at training camp practice, I wonder what it would have sounded like to have Nate Newton mic'd up back in the day. It wouldn't have been nice and you would have had to hide the little children. <laughs> <laughs> he used to tell me, he's, he's told me before when they were really rolling with running with Emmett and Moose, he would just tell the guys, hey, hey, we're running it right behind me. There's nothing you can do about it. So I'd like to hear that. That's a good way to be mic'd up for Nate Newton. Here's what Michael Gallup said. This is how I got a mic on me today. See, I don't be saying no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? 
Ah, bro. Ah. Mike on the back anyway. Oh, oh yeah. Go, Getting go, through there. Yeah, yeah. Big drop step right there. That's really what I'm good at. I made sure you was locked in. See how you corrected me? I was making sure you knew. Alright. Dirty! Dirty! Let's go. Good night, dirty! Just a little commentary, you know, had a comment on everybody throughout today. And an athletic catch right there. Pretty solid. Athletic catch, you know. Jose, nice move. Okay, draw him. Big ass hands. He got like a 3X, bro. Really three and a half. The rookie. Uh-oh. He got CD land back up at the top. It's called a bang bang play. Little second base throw, you know what I'm saying? Simi is pretty good. Pretty good. The rookie. Man, he ain't got no saw in his hammer yet. Yeah. Got him. Oh yeah, I did it two hands, big fella. Dino. My bad, boy. I didn't mean to step on your foot. <laughs> hey, freaking nine out there. Freaking nine. I ain't seen no cameras on. Nobody have a camera following. No, I, yeah, somebody Just a mic. Been following the whole time. I got you. It's a day's work right there. Thank you, bro. Day's work. Simmy, let them know. Day's work right there. Tell the never, camera. You never told him. He didn't even tell us he was mic'd up. Kind of like Stop right lying, now. bro. That's crazy. I told everybody. Let y'all know. Crazy. Feds out here watching. You are a fed. I ain't no fed, cuz. Michael Gallup brought to you by AT&T. Definitely much nicer than what we would have heard from Nate Newton back in the day. When we come back, we hear about another former Cowboy. Ezekiel Elliott has a new home. How does that affect the Cowboys running back room when we come back? Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the final segment of special edition from Oxnard, California. The next time we will be back on special edition, we'll be back in studio at the Star in Frisco. Excited to return home, but what a great camp it has been here on the West Coast with Nick Eatman, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We started the show with contract news. We finished the show with outside of the Cowboys contract news as Ezekiel Elliott signs with the New England Patriots, a one year six million dollar deal. It's bittersweet to see Zeke sign somewhere in a spot where he's going to be welcome, but also uh, it's it's bitter to see him not in a Cowboys uniform anymore. Lots of memories being made with Zeke. Oh, without a doubt, he, he was he was an outstanding player for the Cowboys. Still has some left in, in you know, in the tank and, and certainly wants to prove that with the Patriots and you know, the funny thing is, is that here he is going to be on the schedule again with week week four, and and you know with with the Patriots, and you know it'll it'll be interesting to, to see you know that, that that dynamic. But yeah, I think great memories for Zeke. Zeke, I love you, man, and just do what you got to do, not against us, though. Thank you. Yeah, let's wait until week five <laughs> until you really you go one through three, and then week five you can have some numbers. Yeah, interesting thing there, if you just look at the running backs they're going to face, there was Saquon Barkley, and then Dalvin Cook goes to the Jets, <laughs> and then you got James Conner, right. then you got Zeke, and then you got McCaffrey, and then you got Eckler. Those first six games, there's a lot of good running backs they're going to be they're going to be tested. You think the run defense is ready? Be ready, yeah. What about the running backs for the Cowboys? You feel like they've kind of started to distance themselves a little bit from the pack. Yeah, I st still think you know, these, this you know preseason game that, that still has to be played. We'll, we'll see. I, I still think there's a lot of questions there. You know they they need to come on and play, man, because we ain't got Zeke to fall back on. One of those guys got to show up. Dottle or uh, Davis, one of you guys have to show up. Or Deuce. Or Deuce, yeah, or Deuce Vaughn. He's continued to be a fan favorite all the way through. Nate's being quiet over there on the corner. He <laughs> likes Deuce Vaughn. I can feel it here on Special Edition. Again, thank you for joining us. For Nate, Nick Eatman, for Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans and our entire Dallas Cowboys crew. So long from Oxnard. We'll see you next time on Special Edition.